Guys, I am cutting my lawn at one inch in length, okay? And I'm telling you, if this guy right here can do it, then you guys can do it too. And I will say it's not without its challenges. I've got all sorts of things going on in my lawn. And you know what? Those are somewhat compounded the shorter you mow. At least that's what I'm finding out as I do this. This is my first full year real mowing at a really short uh, length. And this isn't short compared to what some of the guys are doing out there. So all I'm saying is that if you have all sorts of free time, you're looking to figure out what to do with it. If you have money just burning a hole in your pocket that you're looking to spend, if you don't mind strange looks from your neighbors or an evil glare from your wife when you go out to mow for the eighth day in a row, well, then this might be for you. So I typically take accountability for my own actions, okay? But I'm telling you, I went down the YouTube black hole. I watched one shortcut lawn video, okay? You know, it was either from that sissy grass guy, Ryan Knorr, or it could have been from that, oh, that mustache man, Connor Ward, I don't know. But then all of a sudden, what did YouTube do? It started just recommending all these other lawn videos to me. And then I started thinking I could do this too, all right? And so I kind of had that idea, get informed. And then I started making a plan. And then after that, before you know it, well, here, now I'm buying one of these Toro Real Masters here off of, off of the internet here and mowing my lawn with it. So sometimes, you know, when I go into a hobby and my wife will attest, I kind of go overboard right off the deep end there and uh, just start going gung-ho at it and, and we see what works. And so on that note, I learned best doing things myself, figuring out what works, what doesn't work. I'm gonna go through those really quickly today, the problems and the challenges I've had on my first year real mowing at one inch tall grass here and see if we can shorten your learning curve. So I mow about 24,000 square feet, okay, so a little bit over a half acre of what I'm actually mowing here. So that's a little bit larger than what some of the other uh, folks that are on YouTube are mowing. And, you know, probably, you know, a decent amount larger than a lot of uh, just suburbia that we're living in, right? So uh, just have a pretty good sized lot here, and it's uh, certainly not large by any means. But I wanted something larger to mow with. That's why I went with that 3100. I didn't want to walk behind just because of the sheer amount of time it would take. You're mowing very frequently with a real mower, so you have to mow... You don't necessarily have to mow every day, but you're mowing every couple days. Uh, one of the products I use to kind of increase the time in between mows is called Teenex, and that's a very expensive product uh, for a one-time purchase. However, it does last for a long time. You can probably use it for the whole season, maybe a couple seasons or split it with somebody else even because you don't need a lot of the product, but you just apply it as a, um, a liquid, so it's a sprayable solution there that you apply every once a month or so dramatically reduces the amount of growth. Um, things spread a little bit more uh, horizontally this way and thicken up a little bit. It's just promotes a different kind of growth. And so you're not getting the stem length as often or as quickly. And so you don't need to mow as much. And in fact, there's been times I've only had to mow every three or four days and that's been just fine. So when I say anybody can do this, you know, I'm not working with anything special here. You know, I'm in Michigan, so we're in cool season grass country. You know, when this was planted, we built this house four years ago, uh, moved in, had it seeded with just a mixture of fescues and some rye in there, probably a little bit of bluegrass, probably a little bit of everything underneath the sun, you know. So um, put that down, came in nice. I've been mowing at three to four inches for ever since then you know up until last year late in the summer i started mowing shorter and shorter with a john deere x739 uh, just a standard rotary mower you know and i was mowing pretty much as short as i could that two two and a half inches which was really short and you know what with a rotary mower that's going around this way you have to have a very flat lawn because you have a, a 60 inch deck in my case that's all on one plane right so if you have undulations in the ground well this one plane here as it's coming up and down is going to cut all that grass at different lengths the difference with something like a real mower, especially the 60 inch one here, or 72 inch one, excuse me, is it's got three individual reels, okay? And even if you have a smaller machine or a single machine, it's still only gonna be about this wide, a couple feet wide maybe. And so that really follows the ground, the contour of the ground. And so having something perfectly level and flat isn't nearly as big of a deal. So I was able to quickly transition from two inch down to one inch, just like that, going from rotary mower to real mower. And maybe there was a little bit of shock uh, to the plant at first, to the grass at first, but after a couple cuttings at one inch, it really adapted well. We're now in early September here in Michigan and we're getting into the heart of the season. Um, so let me back up a little bit. I did overseed, let's see, last fall with a rye and bluegrass mixture. And I actually put more seed, that same mixture, just a rye bluegrass, a perennial ryegrass, a bluegrass mixture down the spring as well. And I've got 250 more pounds of overseeding I'm gonna do this fall, which I know it's probably a little bit crazy, but I really wanna get this thickened up. I know there's a point of putting too much seed down. Honestly, I really don't think on the property that I have here that uh, 250 pounds is gonna be uh, too dramatic for it, but we're gonna see what happens. 
The point being is that if you want to mow low, you have to have the right type of grass to accommodate that. So this has only improved uh, over the whole course of the summer as more of that rye and that bluegrass have really filled in and started to darken the turf, you know, transition from more of the tall fescue uh, that would have been in there. And, you know, fescue is not really something you want to cut too short. So it's just been a transition process and that's okay. You don't have to start out from scratch with a new lawn. I know some of those guys do it and who knows, maybe I'll do that as well. You know, just nuke the whole lawn at some point and start over from scratch. But right now I'm really happy with the way it looks. This is the best it's looked yet. And it's only going to keep getting better, especially again, for those cool season grasses, spring, fall, cooler temperatures, right? That's kind of when they thrive and excel. So if you take a look right in this area, and I've got areas like this all over the lawn, I'm finally, finally finding something that works, but ants, that's what this is, ant hills all over the place, you know, they get rolled over by the, the rollers on the reels there on an every day or every other day basis, but it leaves all these um, bare spots that are here, and you know, up until a week ago even, these were going to be ant hills. Every time I, I mow, boom, ant hill pops back up and all this, and it's like this all over the lawn, it looks terrible, and it's been driving me nuts. Um, I've tried actually three different products before I finally found something that worked, um, you know, both liquids and granulars, things that are supposed to last the entire year. And specifically, one of the first items on the label says it's for ants, right? All kinds of ants and nothing has worked. So I finally just had some, uh, uh, some granular stuff that actually my wife had just in the garage there. I took that out to a whole bunch of areas out here and you can see there's no ant hills here right now. I can actually, I can see an ant right there though. He just went in, but uh, normally this would be already uh, ant hills galore again. So I think I have something that works, but this should look a lot better. I'm going to be running a, a three point dethatcher rake over top of this very lightly. Uh, it's not, I'm not looking to do a deep dethatch, but I'm just going to do that right before I overseed just to stir up the ground, break it up a little bit. Hopefully we'll break up some of these dirt clods that are here as well. We'll get some new seed on there and fill everything in. So one of the things that worked great for me actually this year was sedge hammer, which is a nuts edge killer. And so this whole area right in here had pockets of nuts edge, just, you know, here, here, probably five, six, seven areas of nuts edge. And nuts edge is like a bright, almost like a fluorescent or lime green color. And it grows a lot quicker than the grass. So when your grass is this tall, you know, after a couple of days, that nuts edge will be sticking up, you know, probably double the height of it. And so there was sporadic pockets of it all over the place in the front yard as well. I've been battling it for a couple of years and I would literally just go up my hands and knees and pull the individual stalks. They do actually pull quite easily, but it just kept propagating and, and really spreading out. So I got sedge hammer. That product worked amazingly well. I saw some reviews that said you had to use two applications, but for me, besides a couple areas that I just completely missed, um, it worked really well in the first application and it's completely gone now. Now the absolute worst thing that I've had going on in my lawn is my dog. So uh, these are all the spots where she relieves herself and it just murders the lawn. So I've been really trying to get her to go uh, in the wood chips actually, just in a little area over here that's kind of off in the corner and avoid that. But you know, I mean, it's just, she's in and out a lot and you can, you can see here, it just wreaks havoc. And this is the, the main concentration, this area right here. I've tried all sorts of products. There is a Scott's product, a patch, um, kind of the brown stuff if you've seen it there that I put in here, but it's got its own seed in there, the, uh, the fescue and some rye, but it's a lot of fescue that I don't really want. I do use that on occasion though, just because it works really well. It germinates quickly, it, it holds water, it retains water to keep the moisture level up to help the germination and get things going quicker. But um, yeah, this is terrible. I've been actually thinking about nuking this area here and starting over and just fencing it off and to allow it re to regrow. But, the long-term solution for me is to just train Rosie just to go in the wood chips or some other area that is not the lawn. So another self-inflicted problem that I created this year was uh, fertilizer. So I had a granular fertilizer, spread everything out. Um, then I was gonna go put through carbon G, I think it is, but it was a um, supposed to be spreadable, you know, through a, through a three-point tractor spreader. I put it in there, I did a video on it actually uh, in the spring or late or early summer, maybe it was but it just would not spread no matter what I did. So I tried to cut it, you know, by adding fertilizer to it, mixing it in and trying to thin it out and make it um, more easily spreadable. And it wasn't working. So then I started just like scooping some out and just throwing it around thinking, you know, I'm just gonna spread some of it out. I'll just do, some, do that in various areas of the lawn. And I put way too much down in a couple areas here. And I even tried to use a backpack blower and blow it all out, but it just nuked uh, a big chunk right through here and a little bit over that way as well just did not spread out like it needed to. And so I've been struggling to get the grass to rebound uh, since that point. And, you know, really, I'm, I'm just gonna have to do a concentrated effort, heavily overseed after I agitate the ground this fall here. It's the right time of year to do it, and I'm hoping it recovers. I've been working on trying to fix 
a, a water coverage, a sprinkler coverage problem. And this general area, ever since we moved in, you know, the guys that installed the system haven't, they've been out here a handful of times to try to work on it. But yeah, brown spots that are here, here, you know, there, and probably the most significant one is right here as well. And it's like, no matter how much I water, the water's just not getting there. And so it's not gonna correct it. But, you know, we're getting closer. We just got a good rain actually this morning. We're getting into that uh, cooler season. So this should recover and, and green back up. But I do have to figure out a long-term solution to handle this area right here um, because it's kind of right in the middle of the yard too. I want it to be a good focal point. I don't want it to look like crap and be dormant and everything else like it is right there. So water is critical. I will say that I'm not necessarily watering more than I was when I was cutting at three or four inches. I really am. I, well, I probably watered heavily all the time on the, on the heavier end, um, but I'm not doing it significantly more. And again, it didn't matter if I would water this area three times a day. It's simply the coverage is not there. So this right here, you know, with some crabgrass that I had, you can see it's dead as a doornail right now. And honestly, you know, there's an oldie but a goodie that I absolutely love using, which is the Ortho Weed Be Gone Max, you know, the orange label stuff, plus the crabgrass killer. And uh, I'm telling you, that stuff nukes weeds like nothing else. Um, I Honestly, that's probably the best product I've ever used for spot treatment in your lawn. Um, works fantastic on this kind of crap here. You know, you can see it's killed it right at the base there. You can see some of the extensions out here are still alive, but I actually had to look around. Just a few days ago, I had spots like this all over the place and they're already just dying and disintegrating and, and getting buried in and mixed in with uh, the grass. Works really well. Not only on weeds like this, but also clovers like this right here. You can see, again, I sprayed this about the same time and it's starting to uh, take effect and do its thing. You know, tenacity also works well. I just don't love the bleaching effect that it has on portions of the lawn for a couple of weeks, but you're going to have to kill something, right? You're going to have something discolored, and the point is just to get rid of it long term. But I do struggle with uh, clovers like this that pop up. Probably something I'm always going to struggle with because I don't always seem to kind of get around the edges, so it'll just kind of propagate even and spread out further if I nail this area. But that ortho, that orange label stuff with the, with the crabgrass killer in there, that stuff works amazing. And the last big problem I had was really in the front yard where I really battled a fungus. Um, I think it was ended up being summer patch, but you know, you can get fungicide or fungicide, whatever you want to call it. And you, you should, you know, spray that down periodically, uh, preventatively throughout the course of the summer, maybe on a four to six week basis or whatever the case might be. You can do it every couple of weeks um, and maybe alternate the type of fungicide that you put down uh, to kind of react or, or prevent varying types of fungus from occurring. But I really battled that quite a bit there and you can still see the damage in the front lawn. The fungus has actually stopped spreading. It's, it's gone now, but the damage has been done. And so I am gonna clear that up with that dethatching. I'm probably gonna go a little bit heavier in the front yard to get all that dead um, thatch out of there, you know, rake it up, get it gone, and then have that infilled with new seed. You know, I even faced a hydraulic leak that left a, uh, <laughs> a still there line of hydraulic fluid wet that just totally killed the grass in the front yard. So I've really had a lot going on, but I tell you what, I wouldn't trade real mowing for anything. I don't ever want to go back to mowing with a rotary mower unless it's for sucking up leaves, that kind of thing in the fall and in the spring as well. But I absolutely love real mowing. It's very quiet. Um, it just does such a great, crisp, clean job. With the lines and the rollers and everything else, it looks fantastic. There's just no way around it. If you're going to real mow, you have to mow more frequently. It's probably going to require more uh, time and resources on your behalf, but it's a hobby, right? This is something that I enjoy doing. This is what I want to come out and spend my time doing, especially, you know, when it's beautiful weather like this, like we have right now. The summers just go by too fast here in Michigan. So hopefully this gives you some confidence. If you are considering real mowing, I am a total novice when it comes to this, but if I can figure it out, I promise you, you can figure it out too. Maybe we'll do some more updates on the lawn here in the future, but thanks so much for watching. If you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. Make sure you read through the description as well. A lot of useful links down there for tractor owners and check out the other videos on my channel. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.